Hello everyone. Uh, in this session, we'll discuss about SPI in uh, LPC2148 microcontroller. Now, what is this SPI? SPI basically is a serial peripheral interface, and it is a protocol which comes under serial communication, that is synchronous serial communication. Now, there are some peripherals which provides this protocol, like uh, that depends on the controller. Now, if we are using LPC2148, then we have the peripheral like SPI, which provides us uh, this uh, uh, serial peripheral interface protocol. When uh, they come across the PIC microcontroller, then we have a peripheral like MSSP, now which will provide uh, SPI protocol. Okay. So before going to discuss about this, let us see uh, the features of this uh, SPI protocol. Now, as you can see here, uh, these are the major features of SPI, that is synchronous serial protocol. So as I told you that it is a synchronous serial protocol. Now, what is this synchronous serial communication? Now, in, in synchronous serial communication, uh, like uh, there will be two devices or two or more devices, but one of the devices which generates the clock will be termed as master, and the devices which receive the clock will be termed as slave. So, slave will not have any chance of generating the clock. So, master can only generate the clock signal. Okay, and data is transmitted along with the clock signal in case of synchronous communication. Okay, and now how the data will be transmitted? Initially, the master will be sending or master or transmitter will be sending the start bit and then it will be sending all the message bits. It might be it, it might be including number of characters and later on it will be sending the stop bit. Now, in case of synchronous serial communication, start bit indicates the start of communication and the stop bit indicates the termination or end of communication. Okay, so this is how the data is transmitted in case of synchronous serial protocol. Now, the next feature is full duplex communication. So, full duplex in the sense simultaneous uh, bidirectional data transfer can happen in case of this full duplex communication. Okay. So, we have uh, something like three kinds of uh, modes like simplex, hop duplex and full duplex. Now, when it comes to simplex, it is a unidirectional communication and when it comes to hop duplex, it is bidirectional but simultaneous transmission cannot happen uh, in uh, hop duplex communication. But whereas in full duplex, both the transmitter and receiver can uh, transmit the data or receive the data at the same time, okay? And uh, it is a combined master-slave uh, uh, protocol. It means uh, a number of masters or slaves can be connected to a single uh, SPI bus, but the condition is only one master can communicate with one slave, okay? Even though the number of masters and slaves are connected, but masters can only communicate with only one slave, okay? And here we can uh, represent a single character with the help of 8 or in the range of 8 to 16 bits. So I can uh, represent a single character with the help of 8 bits or else a maximum of 16 bits, okay? But basically in most of the applications in the real world, we use 8 bit representation by because ASCII is the representation which is used everywhere. So ASCII, rec uh, ASCII representation requires only 8 bits, okay? So these are the basic features of uh, this SPI protocol, okay? And the important one here is synchronous serial protocol, where the master will have only chance of generating the clock, okay? Now let us see the signals or pins which are provided by this SPI peripheral. Now it is providing us totally four pins, like FCK, SL, MISO, and MOSI. And coming to this uh, LPC2148, we have totally two uh, SPI peripherals. One is SPI0 and the other one is SPI1. Okay, so both are same, so that's the reason I'm just talking here about uh, SPI 0, so that is the reason here uh, each and every signal is uh, is uh, prefixed or sorry, is, uh, is appended with a 0, okay, which indicates that these are the pins of SPI peripheral 0, okay. Now, SCK is the clock pin, now clock pin will uh, will give the clock, okay. Now, master is the peripheral or master is the device which generates the clock, so here clock will uh, clock will be acting as output for master device and the same clock pin will, will be acting as input to the slave device, okay? Why? Because master can only have the chance of generating the clock. So master generates the clock and then it transmits the clock. Now that clock is received by the slave, okay? So in case of master, SCK should be output and in case of slave, we have to program SCK in such a way that it, it should be acting as input, okay? And then we have SL. Now this is the pin which is used uh, for selecting a particular slave. Now it is an active low pin, okay? So if you have, uh, take an example like uh, we have one master and we have uh, four slaves. Now the master wants to communicate with the second slave. Now what it will do is, it will send the logic zero through this particular slave select pin. 
okay so whenever a particular slave receives a logic zero uh, through this particular pin then that particular slave gets activated now it can communicate with the master so slave select is mainly used for selecting the slave or enabling the slave okay if it is an active low so it responds for logic zero if it is an active high then it activates for uh, active high that is a logic one okay but in case of lpc2148 now this sl pin is actually low pin so it gets activated or enabled only for logic zero and it is mainly used for uh, selecting a particular slave device okay and the next one is miso pin now miso is nothing but master and slave out now if the slave wants to transmit some data then slave will transmit the data through this pin and uh, now the master is going to receive the data through the same pin so master will receive the data and slave will be transmitting the data through this particular pin so miso of master is connected to miso of slave so that when slave transmits the data master will be receiving the same data okay and then you have mosi pin which is nothing but master out slave in now mosi of uh, master is connected to mosi of slave so it means whenever the master sends the data uh, that is transmitted through mosi and the same data is received by the slave through the same pin okay so let us see the uh, block diagram of this uh, spi as you can see now this is a master and this is a slave okay so here master has generated the clock now that clock is given as an input to the slave device okay so as uh, both are operating with the same frequency so both will operate at the same speed okay if any changes in the clock of the master during the transmission the same changes are going to reflect at the slave side so it means uh, there is no loss of data in case of this synchronous communication but when it comes to asynchronous you have to you have to provide uh, a clock of a, uh, or else we have to provide a stable clock at both the ends if any change uh, that has happened in any one of the device then it will result in loss of data okay so this is the basic advantage of a synchronous communication where a clock is dependent for uh, both the master and slave devices and then mosi of uh, this master is connected to mosi pin of the slave so if master transmits any data now that is received by the slave through the same pin okay and miso of master is connected to miso of uh, slave so if slave is transmitting any data now that is received by the master through the same pin okay and then slave select now as i told you that it is an active low so that, that's the reason it is indicated with a bar symbol here so ss bar <coughs> now the master will send a logic zero to one of the gp ivo pins to this slave device okay and the slave device will receive that zero through this ss bar okay so whenever this ss bar is activated or uh, whenever it is activated then the slave gets enabled so that it can it, it now can communicate with the master device okay now let us see the registers which we need to uh, actually program inside this uh, spi peripheral so these are the registers which you need to program like spcr as a, as a every time say that whenever we come across a peripheral then uh, we have to program or we have to access one register that is control register so control register basically used for controlling the functionality of the complete peripheral okay and then we have a spsr which is status register by this we can know uh, the kind of data that the receiver is going to receive okay as well as we can all we can also monitor some bits by which we can say that whether the uh, transmission has completed successfully or receiving is completed successfully okay and then we have data register uh, which is uh, similar to the buffer register in case of uh, asynchronous communication so where the user can only access this data register but not the shift register which is internally present inside this uh, spi block okay and then we have a, a clock counter register now this is used for setting the frequency by which uh, Uh, the master can transmit the data with some speed okay and then we have interrupt flag register so we'll discuss about this interrupt flag register in the later slides so let us start our discussion with uh, spcr which is nothing but serial peripheral control register okay now it is a uh, it is a 16 bit register as you can see here now out of these 16 bits we use only some bits and the remaining are reserved okay so let us start with uh, lsp bits so the second bit is bit enable now with the help of this bit we can select number of bits that are used for representing a single character okay so if we are programming this bit to logic 0 then it means we are representing a single character with only with 8 bits so it means we are going with ascii representation okay and uh, if you are using this bit as logic 1 then it means you can represent a single character uh, in the range of in the range of uh, some 8 to 16 bits representation 
okay so we can select the number of bits used for representing a single character by using uh, these bits that is 8 to 11 okay so if you want to represent a single character with more than 8 bits then you have to program this bit enable to 1 and then you have to specify how many number of bits that you are going to represent the single character whether you want to represent with 8 bits 9 bits 10 bits or else so on up to 16 bits okay <coughs> and then we have clock phase now clock phase is uh, completely dependent on this clock polarity okay now we have clock polarity if you program it to 0 then the clock signal base value sh will start from logic high okay if you program it to 1 then the clock signal base value will start from logic low okay and then you have a master bit now with the help of this bit you can make uh, the device to act as master or as to act as slave okay so there are some devices uh, which can act either as master or else as slave now in those devices you can program it like uh, if you want to use it as master then uh, you have to program this particular bit to logic one okay now if you want to use the same device as slave then this particular bit should be programmed as logic zero okay and then we have a lsb bit now if you want to transmit the data from the lsb point of view then you have to program it to logic one and if you want to transfer the data from the MSB point of view, then it should be programmed as zero. Okay. And then you have interrupt enable bit. As I always say that every interrupt will have two bits, like interrupt enable and interrupt flag. So if you are programming this bit to logic one, when an interrupt is generated, then the processor will be executing the ISR, which is related to SPI. Okay. So this is for that. That is uh, just for enabling the SPI interrupt. Okay. And the remaining bits are reserved. Okay, so this is how we are going to use SPCR. Now, in case of master, the bits which we need to program, like if I'm going with ASCII representation, so it will be zero, and then clock phase and clock polarity. Basically, we go with zeros, and then master. If it is a master device, then it has to be programmed as logic one, and remaining bits depend on our requirement. Okay. Now, let us see the next register that is SPSR, which is nothing but a serial peripheral <coughs> status register. As you can see, we'll start from the MSB bit like a uh, SPIF here. So SPIF is the interrupt flag. This is not the interrupt flag which we are talking actually. So this is the flag which we need to check while transmitting or while receiving the data. Okay. So after placing the data byte into the data register of a master or else in a slave, then we have to monitor this particular bit. Okay. So this bit will become one when. Uh, whenever a transmission is completed successfully or whenever the receiving has been completed successfully okay so we have to monitor this bit while transmitting or else while receiving now if it has become one while transmitting then it indicates that a character has been transmitted now if it, ha if it has become one while receiving then it indicates that a character has been received successfully okay and then we have uh, error bits here like write collision and read overrun now write collision is with, uh, with respect to the transmitter assuming that one character is in transmission now now if you place one more character into the data register so that character will be immediately uh, moved into the shift register but now uh, it is still in transmission of the earlier character so what happens here the present character is overridden with the previous character okay so that is nothing but write collision so when that particular condition happens then this will become one indicating a write collision error okay and then read overrun this is with respect to the receiver now receiver has received one character but uh, it has not read that particular character now that character is present inside the buffer register or data register okay now if master without knowing that information if it sends one more character now this character is going to be replaced with the earlier character okay now that results in a read over and error okay and this is with respect to the receiver and we have something like abort and mode f okay that is mode fault error now mode fault results whenever the slave select of the master uh, is enabled okay if if slave select of master is enabled uh, while transmission if any of the other master uh, is sending a logic zero through the slave select of master pin then it results in a mode fault so that is the reason uh, we are going we have to disable the slave select pin of the master okay and then we have abort mode now while transmission assuming that the master is transmitting some data to the slave now while transmission if we make slave select of that particular slave to logic high it means if we disable that particular pin then what happens then the transmission will be cancelled okay so that is nothing but the abort mode okay so these are the error bits and the other one is uh, this SPIF we have to monitor while transmission as well as while receiving the data now we have SPDR now this is the buffer register which we are talking about 
So the user can only access this buffer register. Now, if you want to represent, if you are representing a single character with 8 bits, then uh, these uh, the data will be stored inside 0 to 7 bits. If you are representing the data with more than 8 bits, then the data will be stored inside these two blocks. Okay. So SPDR is a basically a 16-bit register out of which the high-end uh, high-end bits will be used only when we want to represent the character with more than 8 bits. Okay. And then we have CCR register which is clock counter register by which we have to specify the frequency by which uh, we need we are going to transfer the data. Okay. Now the uh, SPI uh, that is a uh, clock rate is uh, calculated with the help of this formula as you can see P clock divided by SPCCR0. Now we have P uh, clock is nothing but peripheral clock. Okay. So in, in our case we are getting the peripheral clock as 15 megahertz. Okay, we can also uh, modify it by using the PP divider. Okay, so in our case, it is getting 15 megahertz. Now that gets divided by SPCCR0. This is the value which we need to calculate, and uh, and uh, basically we know with what frequency uh, we want to transmit. So we know peak clock, we know frequency, and we have to find out this SPCCR0 value. Okay, and then we have SPI int register. Now this is the inter flag. So whenever transmission or receiving is completed, then this will become 1 indicating that one interrupt have been generated ok. So if this has become 1 and at the same time we have enabled SPIE that means this this particular bit then the processor will immediately execute the ISR which is related to SPI peripheral ok. So let us see a sample program for a master as well as a slave. So my intention is I want to transmit a character from the master and the same character should be received as the slave and I have to verify whether it is transmitted or not and whether it is received or not ok. For that I have written a program so I am including my header file and then uh, this is my main function I have used one character variable now I am using this pin cell 0 to configure the GPIO pins to act as UART pins as well as SPI pins and then I am using SPCCR0 uh, by which I am going to by which I am going to specify the frequency ok I have calculated some frequency and uh, have specified some value into this and then I am using SPCR this is the control register by which I am mentioning that now this device is acting as master along with ASCII representation it means I am using only 8 bits ok and then uh, these are the registers which are related to UART I am uh, going with the control register and then baud rate of 9600 and then I am placing the character like M into this data register and uh, I am waiting until this character is transmitted. Okay, I have to wait until this character is transmitted. Okay, that is known by uh, monitoring this SPIF bit. Okay, so as soon as this SPIF becomes one, it comes out of this while loop, and I'm going to check whether this data is transmitted or not. Okay, and at this slave, what I'm doing here is I have to receive the data. So for that purpose, uh, I'll, I have to monitor this SPIF bit at the receiver point of view, and as soon as it becomes one, it indicates that slave has received a data. Now that data is placed into this character variable and I am transmitting this character variable on the master uh, sorry on the slave side where to, to check whether it has received the same character or not ok. So this is how we, we can write the programs for SPI and we can also configure the SPI and we can also use the SPI protocol ok thank you.